have your attention, please. 2022, take it back to 01. Back when yelling folk was shocking and fun. Back when Masketeers exploded onto the scene. Britney and Justin were in sync. Know what I mean? Steven Tyler screamed, he didn't want to miss a thing. Back when Carson Daly dominated the screen. Back a couple decades before I felt old. Before Janet Jackson had a whole nipple exposed. Whoa. Hold up, whoa, Nelly. Dr. Dre is scheduled to be featured on my telly. This about to be the best, there's nothing you can tell me. A heavy dose of nostalgia, no better way to sell me. Just that, a panic fall. So I think I need to get my friends Frank and Jan and Cole. There's no way it will be better than the TRL show. Can it be hell no? I be so get fed for show. Time to level my expectations still low. They were once real high, gotta make them real low. Hit them with the deal low. They were once real high, gotta make them real low. Hit them with the deal low. It's the Park Thursday Live with Dillo's Dudes. Featuring Frank. And Jen. This is Theme Park Thursday live with Dillo's Diz. She is Jen. Hello. And I am Frank. And for the next 30 minutes, usually we have three topics or subjects that we talk about that we did not discuss on the Theme Park Thursday podcast, which dropped this morning. Check it out in your favorite pod catchers. We discussed the 90s. We're on our way to 90s Con in Hartford, Connecticut this weekend. Jen, do you now have two outfits instead of one outfit? Listen, no, not really, because this this Friday... Well, no one knows. No one knows what we're doing Friday yet. Do you want to say what we're doing <laughs> you can Friday say now? What we're doing right now, because on the on when we were recording the podcast, we hadn't officially bought our Friday tickets to '90s Con, but right. with the Mickey Mouse Club panel discussion, we're like, we have to go. And so then, Jen, over to you. So then, so we get the tickets for '90s Con on Friday, but then Frank gifts me my. Uh, for <laughs> birthday present uh, with a group photo of the MMC. So we're doing that on Friday now. So I had a whole outfit picked out for Saturday, but now I'm like, well, what? I wasn't going to like wear anything specific on Friday. I was just going to do whatever because it's kind of like a half day. And if we went like, oh, whatever. Now I'm in my head going, well, what am I going to wear? What am I? I don't know. I may have to go with like the uh, MMC 30 shirt, though, since we're meeting them, you know, mm-hmm. so maybe that uh, might true. work. Maybe right. I'll do that. That's a good call. That's a good call. <sighs> I mean, that's a good now. This is a good point, Jeffers. What's more 90s than wearing the same thing back to back to back? Good point. I mean, and that was my thinking when I talked <laughs> right. about the flannel shirt. I, I mentioned that on the uh, podcast today, so that uh, makes complete sense. Uh, yeah. But no three topics or subjects this week. We have uh, our first round picks in the Dillos is my favorite thing about Disney ever this year. March Madness Mania Pooh. Corn. I knew there was one thing I didn't prepare before the live stream, and it was the foghorn sound. <laughs> oh, wait, you know what? Actually, we should do this. Hold on. Let's see if I screw yeah. something up here. Oh, oh that's right. <laughs> Forgot Dillos we have madness. that. Yes. So we'll be sharing our first round picks. Uh, those who have requested their bracket already via dillosdiz at gmail.com have until March 24th to submit their bracket completed. I want to mention Jeffers in a second here. Um, You have until the 24th to complete the bracket for a chance to win a Disney gift card. Not only are we doing one prize, we're doing two prizes, one for the general public of the universe, and then one for guests of DillosDizResort.com, which is our Patreon membership. If you join the Patreon, if you become a guest at the resort, you have two chances to win because you can win as a resort guest a gift card, and you also enter to win the general public of the universe gift card. So two chances to win for guests at DillosDizResort.com. Jeffers in the chat said that he completed his assignment early. Mm -hmm. He is incorrect. 
Oh, Jeffers. What did you Jeffers do? Jeffers has his finals matchup, but he did not pick the winner. <gasps> Jeffers, are you leaving <laughs> us in suspense? I'm just going to confirm it to make sure I'm not a crazy person. But here's Jeffers tab. I'm not going to pull it up because I don't want to give away anything. Oh, no. Now I see it. You know, that's weird. <laughs> Wait oh, a no, second. No. He has, yeah. he has his Magic Kingdom versus Animal Kingdom slash Studios bracket winner. So he has one at the top. He has one uh -huh. at the bottom, which is the Epcot versus Nostalgia. But then he has blank is your favorite Disney thing ever this year. Oh, it's in the email, he said. It's in the email. I don't know if that it's counts. Winner. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the bracket. So in the bracket, bracket, it doesn't count. That's it, Jeffers. I okay. saw you put that in the com in the chat, uh, Jeffers. So and then I was like, oh, what? Uh, I don't think he realizes. So mm -hmm. if it's in the email, I'll allow it. That's fine. <laughs> but uh, we do actually have one topic that I want to discuss briefly, and that is Obi Wan Kenobi. Mm -hmm. Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> the uh, trailer for the Disney. Plus series um, dropped yesterday. It, it, it drove the internet crazy, drove this Twitter crazy, drove Star Wars fans crazy. So um, to say here that, um, did you see it yet, Jen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of expectations. I saw Lewis post on Twitter mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, there's a we lot lost. in our imagination here when it comes to this time period. Mm -hmm. And I think it's true. And, you know, as I was very angry about the prequels at the time, I had no qualms Stay. about how Obi-Wan Kenobi was treated in the prequels. I think that was... He remains, to me, the, still the pristine character. In, you know, you want to argue the Princess Leia, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But Obi-Wan, I, I can't deal with these expectations. Obi-Wan <laughs> is still on the pedestal. Mm -hmm. In spite of all of this, Clone Wars, everything, Rebels, Jedi cannot all help the appearances, Obi-Wan <laughs> remains unscathed. Compassion. No pressure. Right. No Make pressure. A Obi. <laughs> what were your thoughts, Jen? Lou is saying, uh, I see a copyright Kobe claim like coming to a video oh, yeah, near you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, help it. I mean... Is he? I uh, I mean, first of all, the music, right? Uh -huh. uh, it's, 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 uh, right away. Um, so I, I I think everyone's expectations are not dillowed, and perhaps that's a perfect reason to dillow them. Don't we need to dillow them when they're not dillowed? Isn't that the point? Um, we know that Mama Dillow. We haven't really talked to her about how excited oh, no. she is. And perhaps she needs to watch in real time and do like a proper recap of what she's thinking. Do we need to do episode. like a weekly recap with Mama right. Dillo at yes. Dillosdisresort.com? Yes. <laughs> it'll go fine. It'll be fine. It'll, go, it'll be fine. It won't um, go off the rails at all. <laughs> <laughs> but she, you know, years ago, huge Ewan fan. I mean, Ewan was just her love and uh so i know she has got to be excited but I, I mean i'm looking forward to this again as the star wars appreciator i am more excited for this than i was you know blah, blah, blah. um and so it, the expectations are a little bit higher because it's obi-wan like how can they not be but we might have to deal with them a little bit i mean I, it, there's a lot lot on the line yeah Line, um, on the line. I'm learning some things that. about our bracket, and in a surprise to no one, I might be the blame <laughs> yeah, for I saw that uh, too. <laughs> why Jeffers doesn't have his winner. Because mm -hmm. Lexi also went out the box. She was above the box of the winner yes. with her pick as the mm -hmm. winner, and uh, she couldn't write in the center box for some reason. So I put it above, and it's like, so now it's me. It's a plot. Uh, so it's a trick. That's right. You're all not entered. You didn't officially complete the bracket. We dillowed the winner's box. <laughs> we dillowed <laughs> the winner's box. Um, let me see here. Really took the quality of the original oh, film to a level that. Uh -huh. back. Is this how it started oh. last year? This is how Blame I mean, Frank started. I think. Because Theme Park Thursday Live started in the month of March last year. 
um, mm -hmm. with uh, our picks because we didn't have time to do it on the podcast. So we were like, let's just do a live stream with the picks. And then everyone got comfortable with us appearing together every Thursday. So here we are a year later, mm -hmm. um, you know, with uh, more content for you, yes. the general public of the universe. <laughs> uh, uh, so Blaine Frank definitely became part of that, if that was course. the case. Uh, anyway. Do we yeah. want to get to it? We probably have to get to it. Now we only have 20 minutes left. We have 20 minutes with the 13-minute video. So we're going to yes. share with you our picks. And, uh, let's, let's just play the video. Share the screen. <laughs> share the screen. If anyone missed it at Delos Diz Resort, we have a little behind the scenes of Frank trying to make Hit Him With The Dillo video work uh, for the podcast. And it's always entertaining to see Frank try to work technology. So Always. Well, yeah. I can't even do an, an Excel Excel <laughs> spreadsheet. That's apparently. right. I can't even but say I'm Excel. Dillowing the will winner. We can't talk today. We're, we can't. Dillow's Madness 2022. All right. But Dillow's is my favorite thing about Disney ever this year. March Madness Mania Pool. Let's get right to uh, the Magic Kingdom picks here. Lincoln versus Tigger. Jen, who did you pick? I went Tigger. You went with Tigger? Oh, I feel like that's an upset here. <laughs> well, wait, I pick Lincoln. You know, he's, uh -huh. my, he's the number one seed. What was your basis for this? Uh, I like Tigger better. <laughs> You like Tigger a, better than Lincoln? Is I like Lincoln? him better than, you know, the president. I know. I think because, you know, Tigger is one of my, you know, characters. So mm -hmm. I kind of felt like, how am I going to go not go with Tigger when uh, you have to drag me to try to see Hall of Presidents? You know, I mean, how am I? So how am I not going to pick a character I enjoy? Yeah, fair enough. Big Drop Al. in the chat your picks, by the way. Drop in the chat. Yeah. Big Al versus uh, Wendy on the plank. Yeah, uh, I went with Wendy on the plank. Jen, who did you pick? Same. How am I not going to pick Wendy on the plank? Peter Pan, nostalgia. Come on. Nostalgia. I found a Classic. lot of my picks. Sorry, nostalgia. Not that Big Al isn't, but you know. We not have first. not seen Country Bears really enough to no. warrant that. Uh, Captain Jack in the finale scene of Pirates of the Caribbean, 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 <laughs> uh, versus Hook and uh, the Croc in the final scene of Peter Pan's flight. Jen, who did you go with? I went with Hook and Croc uh, again. Peter Pan nostalgia. I, you know, I enjoy Captain Jack in the finale, but because he's like newer, and because it, you know, I'm like, eh, I, 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 I gotta go with the classic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of. I feel like there's a lot of stuff about Captain Jack in general, so it makes it very difficult to choose. Uh, here we go. I'm just going to stop right here for a second. John and Rover in Carousel of Progress versus three pirates and a prison dog. I'm going to say on my paper right now is written one pick, but I'm going to change my pick and make it the other. Jen, who did you pick? I have a, I have a question mark yeah. next to it. Uh, so I'm going to pick on the spot, which I often do every uh, year. There's always we'll something I do the on the here, spot. I'm going to go John and Rover. When John and Rover, that is yeah. what I wrote down, but I'm going to change my pick to three pirates and no. a prison dog. No. I, I, I mean, I was just like, how do I feel when I see three pirates and a prison dog at the end of Pirates? And that feeling, I think, um, exceeds the feelings I have on yeah. so progress. So I changed I mean, it there. Good reasoning. Um, just to go to Lexi's question, are you really going to be able to fit the whole set of picks here? Ambitious. Just first <laughs> round. Only doing first round first today, round. Lexi. We're yes. taking over Theme Park Thursday Live for the next couple of weeks. So only first round today. First round picks today. Since everyone has until the 24th, we want to give people more time. We don't want to sway people's opinions. That's right. We don't want people picking just because we did. We are influencers and we get that. So we don't want to influence. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Uh, Uncle kidding. Orville versus Lumiere. I have not seen the Enchanted uh, Tales with Belle, so this was a clear. I felt like I could get move away from John and Rover by picking Uncle Orville as well. Yeah, I have not. I have also not seen Enchanted Tales, uh, so I also went to Uncle Orville. 
Yeah, I mean, that's more of the classic. I almost forgot about him when I wrote out the bracket originally. Just a classic. No privacy. Sunny Eclipse versus It's a Small World cast. Jen might have a, a, a fight brewing in her house. Over we this we one. might have to pause this one. Um, uh, oh, Jen. did you did you pick Hook or Captain Jack? There was confusion. Uh, uh, well, I picked uh, Hook and Croc. I'm sorry for the... Okay, uh, yes. I agreed with you, Jen, on all Okay. Of um, uh, okay, so yeah, so Sunny Eclipse, very big for Mr. Snidillo, but I... And I have now new nostalgia for Sunny Eclipse in this household. Right. But I kind of, I had to go Small World cast. He doesn't yeah, know also, yet. Yeah. I went Small World cast. And, you know, in, in hindsight, because I was being indecisive when I wrote the bracket, should it, uh, a full cast, such as the Tiki Room cast here versus yeah. the Bathing Elephant. Is that really fair on both sides? It's not really fair. So uh, maybe a disservice to the small world cast and anyone who comes up against the small world cast remains to be seen here in everyone's bracket. Um, the Tiki Room cast versus the Bathing Elephant at the Jungle Cruise. I went Bathing Elephant. It's an iconic shot. I feel like there's no debating it. I went Bathing yeah. Elephant as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, the Tiki Room cast, again, I feel like with the small world cast, maybe, you know, especially for us, it's heightened because that's more of our ride. Tiki Room, not not so much. So I felt like um, the iconic image of the beating elephant comes into play. Um, the beating heart bride versus the grave digger. Jen, you have a comment. Sorry, yes. I just wanted to go back to Lewis saying he's shocked that we haven't taken our kids to see Belle. I think uh, last time we were probably both there over the summer, they weren't doing it. Um, oh, I think right. she hadn't returned yet. So uh, that's probably the first time I kind of looked into it a little more. So just And the six-year-old went with uh, Mrs. Dillo when she was one, mm -hmm. uh, which allowed for me. Oh, well, I should say she was napping. Mrs. Dillo said, go ride Space Mountain. Which, <laughs> how am I right. going to turn that down? And then when uh, the one-year-old at the time woke up, they went to the Enchanted Tales, so, which is why I haven't seen it yet. Right. Um, Beating Heart Bride versus Grave Digger is very decisive. I know people who have uh, the Beating Heart Bride going a very long way. Jen, who mm -hmm. did you pick? I went with Beating Heart Bride. Mm -hmm. I, I, I went was, with I the Grave Digger. Yeah. yeah. That Grave Digger always stands out to me. I always take time to really observe the details and all of that. So I went Grave Digger. That's an important one to me. And we're done with the Magic Kingdom and we now move Ooh. on to Epcot. That was a lot. Uh, hello, Stevie. Welcome in. Um, hey. Yeah. Dreamfinder and Figment versus Manhole Guy in World of Motion. It's important to mention that the Epcot bracket is past, present, and future, making things more of a challenge to make picks because also in our final bracket, we have Epcot nostalgia contenders in that category. So Dreamfinder and Figment, is this a no-brainer over the manhole guy? I love the manhole guy, but come on. It was, it was like a little bit of a hesitation because of the nostalgia, but, I, but both are nostalgic. So I did go with Dreamfinder and Figment. Got, oh, well, this is what happened last time. I forgot this oh, is what happened yeah. last time. We got Dreamfinder and uh, Figment twice here in the video. The video okay. is being updated, uh, right? Is that correct, Jen? Uh, yes, but I'm having to double check this part now. <laughs> So <laughs> this uh, the full video in just the 13 minute version will be posted on our YouTube channel so you can take a look at it over time. Here's yeah. the second matchup. Ben Franklin and Mark Twain on the American Adventure versus Michelangelo. This is another no brainer for me. I went with Michelangelo. Is it Michelangelo or Michelangelo? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can debate that as well. We might have to look at the spelling for Mr. Dillo. I, uh, uh, Mr. Dillo, Mr. Dillo. <laughs> I went with uh, Michelangelo, Michelangelo, however you say it. That is who I went with. Uh, mm -hmm. The Phoenicians on Spaceship Earth versus Buzzy from The Wonders of Life. We touch on Wonders of Life a little bit this week on Theme Park Thursday, the podcast. I went mm -hmm. with the Phoenicians here. Jen, who did you go with? Same Phoenicians. We must thank the Phoenicians at all times. Um, and Buzzy, again, is more people, I feel like, remember Buzzy more now because of how Buzzy was in the news the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. I don't know many people who saw 
Cranium Command. Sweater Figment versus, uh, I, I missed who's Sweater Figment. <laughs> uh, Sven's Tongue. Oh, uh, Sven's Tongue, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of a Sweater Figment is wearing. We're right. going with Sweater Figment. Yes, Jen? Yes, for sure. Yeah, I no, mean, this, I love, I love Sven's Tongue. Uh, the Maelstrom Trolls versus the Spaceship Earth Paperboy. Jen, did you consider in this decision um, all part, the history of the Spaceship Earth Paperboy, including when he was turned around, or did you just base it on the current status of the Paperboy when making your pick? I didn't really set the rules for this. I went, I went throwback. This mm -hmm. is this is my hashtag my paper boy, not the current paper boy. So uh, I paper chose boy. paper boy. <laughs> yes, uh, I chose the paper boy as well. I'm sure many people will be angry that we did not go with the Maelstrom mm -hmm. trolls. I am not really looking at the the comments in the chat, Jen. <laughs> so let me know. I'm trying to maintain the pausing of the video. Oh yeah, so. wait, I, let me let me bring this up actually. And I think if you have an MFA in dramaturgy, perhaps you pronounce it Michelangelo. But I am from Long Island, so I say Michelangelo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Michelangelo. He did the church. <laughs> he painted. He did the paintbrush. Um, okay. The spaceship Earth engineer, who uh, the popularity for the spaceship engineer, uh, spaceship Earth engineer, continues to grow over time. Versus the three caballeros, Jen. Who did you pick here? I went with the engineer on this one. Mm -hmm. I did as well. I think the functionality of the three caballeros uh, over the past year hurt it a little bit in my eyes, mm -hmm. um, uh, especially when it gets replaced by cardboard cutouts. To be to, the idea that an animatronic can be so easily replaced by a cardboard cutout <laughs> reduced it a bit in my mind. It's the robot butler from. Horizons versus the finale scene of Anna and Elsa on Frozen uh, on the Frozen ride in Norway. Jen, who did you pick? I went with Robot Butler on this one. Again, the classic, the nostalgia. Anna and Elsa are fine. The, the faces are a screen, uh, so you know the, it took away a little bit for me. I mean, Not I've really. always been surprised at the. Uh, I, I mean, I, I didn't. It's not that I didn't notice. But I'm surprised by the by the visceral reactions to uh, them on occasion. That's I, like I don't think it's horrible. It's it's technological progress, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's a little off putting, but I don't I don't know. I I, I I don't know if I understand such strong feelings people have about it. Right, Lexi, can you um, clarify this question? The paper boy can go without a face. I'm a little confused by it. <laughs> well, there's is there rumors or is it fact that the paper boy's face has been removed and placed on another animatronic somewhere mm -hmm. who's I can't remember at this time, and that is why the paper boy has been turned around. He's been he's been stripped of his face like a zombie. If anyone ever puts out that TikTok of a little <laughs> behind the scenes of a faceless paper boy, I will not be happy. <laughs> Uh, and finally, Elsa at the Let It Go moment versus the underwater family in Horizons. And remember last week we talked about uh, you see the one scene and I, I say they're siblings. Do I know they're siblings? I don't know. But the brother who looks a little bit like Mark Hamill is working on the, <laughs> on the, on the pod boat thing. And then the sister is on the video screen. And then when you go to the next scene of Horizons, it's reversed. So you see the animatronic of the sister while the Mark Hamill uh, casting guy uh, you know, who, we're looking for a Mark Hamill type <laughs> to play the role uh, on an Epcot attraction uh, is in the next scene. Jen, who did you pick? I went with the family on this one. Again, mm -hmm. classic. Uh, Lexi, yes, we were picking on the three caballeros for being cardboard, but the paper boy can go without a face. I went with classic <laughs> paper boy. Current paper boy is hashtag not my paper boy. Old school is my paper boy. Okay. You must remember that this bracket and our choices are based in chaos. <laughs> <laughs> we meant we mean our choices are meant to be chaotic in nature to yes. um, engage in the conversation. That's not to say like we're making making things up and just picking our choices at random. No, no, it is it is meant to feel chaos because we never know what we're picking. 
I went with Elsa there because oh. I enjoyed that moment of the ride. So a bit of an upset when it all came down to it. I'm the one who picked the underwater family and mm -hmm. detailed it out and had to explain it twice on these videos. I still <laughs> didn't pick it in the first round. <laughs> right. It's the Animal Kingdom uh, and hashtag always MGM bracket over at Hollywood Studios. The Navi Shaman versus Bean Bunny. Jen, who did you pick? This whole category, I'm like, great. As if we're not AK hate is enough. People are really going to come at us for this. I went Bean Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised. I went with the Shaman. What do you think oh, about that? I mean, that makes sense. When Mr. Snandillo, initially, he like didn't think about Sunny Eclipse with the list. And he was just like, oh, isn't everyone just going to go with uh, the Navi Shaman? Like, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good one. I mean, it makes sense. It's, it's an amazing animatronic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, Statler and Waldorf versus Hopper. I mean, come on. Do we? Do we no, need we did. do we even have to? Can everyone in the there? chat guess our picks? I Statler mean, and Waldorf. Obviously. Waldorf. Again, <laughs> we're just going to be accused of being EK haters. And everyone's going to be like, Frank just picked a Navi Shaman, so he didn't get accused of being an EK. <laughs> yeah. It's tough to be a bug. I haven't seen that in a while, and uh, this is one just asking me about it. It's DJ Rex versus Wheezy. I think this one was a challenge for me. I'm not going to mm -hmm. lie. Like I, I didn't think it would be, and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I don't know if I know the answer to this. Jen, who did you pick? Yeah, I did kind of, uh, I picked one, and then I thought about it again, and I was going to change it up, but I did decide on DJ Rex. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I went with Wheezy, and again, that based on uh, the feeling, you know, uh, I think this last time that we were on Slinky Dog, that's really every time, but, you know, Toy Story, and maybe it's talking about the 90s this week and working in the park, um, Toy Story is such a huge part, you know, they were trying to figure it all out. How did Toy Story fit into the studios when I first started working there? So I feel like this moment here, considering it was, you know, the song of the parade and everything else felt like, look how far we've come. That's how I see it when we get to the finale <laughs> of Slinky Dog Dash. It's like, remember, we didn't know what to do with Toy Story in, in late 1995. Look where we are now. So it's, it's as if Wheezy is singing to me a little bit. I see. All right. Fair enough. We got three minutes left. How, cool. uh, I don't think we're running long if today. If we were ambitious. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I went with BB-8 over uh, Kylo Ren here. I just love when BB-8 appears. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Well, now we just got to go with the video. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, um, you know, but I mean, I did think about Kylo because we are believers that it's really the Wicked Witch. So I did, uh, you know, was like, oh, shit. But now BB-8 for the win for that one. I went with the Yeti over Lightning McQueen, uh, regardless if it's disco or not disco, working or not working, and the appearance of the Yeti is great. Uh, I went Yeti as well, basically because I have not seen Lightning McQueen yet, so I feel like I can't properly judge if I haven't seen it, so, yeah. I went with the Swedish Chef over Potato Head, though. I did debate it a little bit. Uh, I did not debate it, and I went Chef. Come on. I know, but I you know it's not always nice to hear Don Rickles' voice when you're walking through the queue well, that's of true. Mm -hmm. Story Mania. So that was really where the debate lied. But uh, the chef's appearance in Love Edition is fantastic. Come on, here we go with the AK Hata 3PO in the Star Wars queue, definitely over the Carnotaurus on uh, Dinosaur the Ride. Yeah, it should be no surprise that same. <laughs> and that's not to say that the Carnotaurus isn't an impressive animatronic. When uh, the, every time I walk into the queue of, of Star Tours, it's like, oh, it's, it's 3PO and R2D2. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Hondo Anaka versus Flick. Uh, the Hondo animatronic is great. I know uh, uh, Lexi has Hondo going a long way in her bracket. Jen, who did you pick? I went Hondo. Yeah. I AKA mean, <laughs> it's, it, it almost makes you want to stay in the pre show. Of Falcon smugglers yeah. run. All right, let's pick it. Is what the world was there? <laughs> the nostalgia bracket. I went extra terrestrial here over Tarzan. <laughs> Did you pick Tarzan? Because you hate Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. There is no That's question for me on that one. I'm it's just a mannequin is swinging back and forth for 24 years, but it doesn't matter. Nope. Uh, the scary Adventure Dwarfs versus Stitch from Stitch's Great 
escape. I went with the dwarfs, the, the saving grace of the scary adventure ride all those years ago. Uh, same. <laughs> <laughs> Stitch. Stitch. Did you even ever see Stitch? I don't know. I feel like I did um, because then I debated getting a Stitch stuffed animal at the little stand right outside. So I feel like I did, but I, I didn't. Do it. Lexi will be disgusted to know I picked Gene Kelly singing in the rain over the Robo Dog here in the first round of the Nostalgia Bracket. Gene Kelly all the way. Come on. How do you not pick Gene Kelly? Hey, come on. Gene not Kelly. Not that I'm going to judge, but. Yeah. Yeah. Love the Robo Dog. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Yeah. No contest for us. Mm -hmm. The timekeeper versus <laughs> Trigidians. I shouldn't even say that anymore. It's the Greek actors from the old version of Spaceship Earth. They were wearing the like the, the masks mm -hmm. uh, and they were all rehearsing for the play or the play was going on and, and the actors were waiting off stage. So that's not the correct picture. I went with the actors. Jen, you know? yes, the correct picture will be in the updated video. I went Trigidians. The Greek uh, the actors, Wicked whatever. Of the West here over Ellen. I think there's a you know, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of jokes to be made here. I think, but we went with the we both went with the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah, the yeah, Wicked, yeah, yeah. Obviously. Obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm sure the Wicked Witch will go a long way here. Uh, because I didn't pick DJ Rex, I did go with Rex over the Brontos in Universe of Energy, Jen. Same. Oh, you did. And you picked. Yep. You picked Rex in both. Both. Well, two Rexes going. What if they yeah. compete against each other? Who knows what'll happen? Oh yeah, that could be a upcoming uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> matchup for some people. Uh, the Evil Queen at the Mirror versus Mary and Bert on the movie ride. This was a tough one, Snow White's Scary Adventures, because I think that moment is so terrifying, but also awesome when she mm -hmm. turns around and she's the witch uh, versus Mary Poppins and Bert. But in the end, I had a look to make sure I knew what I picked. I picked Mary Poppins and Bert. I want Mary and Bert as well. The movie ride. Uh, animatronics are represented on uh, Kitchen Cabaret, cast from the land versus Iago under new management. Lewis will be dismayed to know that I picked Iago. Same. Uh -huh. like same. We did not yeah. see, I mean, if we saw Kitchen Cabaret once. Yeah. Say, uh, that That's was the thing, I have no connection to Kitchen Cabaret. So, sorry, Lewis. <laughs> sorry, Lewis. So, that does it for our first round picks here. Hashtag Dillo's Madness. I got a little <laughs> mad there at the end. Uh, but that's our first round pick. We'll be back next week on Theme Park Thursday Live with our second round picks. Uh, make sure to get your bracket by emailing Dillo's Diz at gmail.com. Right now, we're going over to Dillo's Diz Resort.com. I have my Google Earth pulled up. Ooh. We're going to talk a little bit about the behind the scenes at hashtag always MGM in the 90s. So if you're at the, uh, the quiet pool or the balcony or the character arcade, we're going to take it over there. You get to see a little bit. Um, I kind of verbally described it a couple of weeks back about uh, the pathways to the parade and everything like that. But we'll do it by map this week before I go to work. <laughs> Before Jen does school pickup. Mm -hmm. That's what we do over at the resort. But thanks for checking us out. Uh, as always, follow us on all the things at Dillo's Diz. Until next time, she's Jen. I'm Frank. <laughs> she's Jen. I'm Frank. <laughs> Bye-bye. Deuces.